buddy. Oh, well. The boy's in bed. Time to chill and play some video games. Play some Call of Duty. Get the sniper out. See what kind of damage we can cause. Clean headshot right there, boys. Oh, missed. No. Oh. Anyway. Hey, guys. I almost forgot about you there for a minute. So this is um my response to um Camaro Times video about how intertwined our lives have become with our vehicles. Now um he made some comments about old movies and um you know Hot Wheels cars and you can hear my cat. She's right there. She's being a jerk, but anyway, um, he talked about movies and stuff growing up, how it turned you into a car guy. He also made a comment about Hot Wheels cars, so I'm going to take you down into my basement, which is trash right now. This is like we finished the basement when we did the house with all naughty pine. Um, but this is my kids, my stepdaughters, girlfriend's daughters, whatever you want to call hers play area it is trash right now but this is going to be my man cave in here slash the cat's hideout this is my little hideout and i collect hot wheels cars now this place is a mess right now because my cat lives down here too but um this is going to be my video game room my man cave car room but anyway i had this wall of hot wheels cars okay and it was all organized and nice, but you know, my cat knocks stuff down. There's some in my boxes and there's some here. I got some in my bedroom that I've accumulated and they have to go all back up. But I've got the whole air cooled series. I've got a bunch of the red liners and I've got the Hot Wheels Garage, Mustangs, Camaros. Now this one is a Camaro 50 anniversary. 69 it's supposed to be white i have two of them one's original this one i took it apart i changed the wheels changed the axles and i completely stripped the body this was white and i left it it's aluminum color because i think it would look awesome and i think it looks awesome and i put him back in his package and that's where he's going to sit but i've always loved camaros firebirds all that my first car that i built was a third gen firebird and then I have the whole Camaro 50th anniversary setup, starting with the 67 and the 69, 73 or 81, I'm sorry, 89, I rock, I had one of those two, I crashed, fourth, gen, third gen, the new Camaro, which is gorgeous, the new Camaro drag car, and of course, the Copo Camaro. Now, guys got the GTR, the tuner cars, Trans Ams, got the truck series. Now, this is my wall of stuff. I originally, guys, that, I kind of got out of the tuner cars, but that was my dream car in that color. Got my tuner crate things. And this was my friend Brendan's BMW 328i that him and I built together. We painted Laguna Seca blue, um, carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber trunk. That's gone now, but I still have a picture because that was like a eight month project. The juke, just because I thought it was cool. I got this Hot Wheels Classic hat still in the package and it came with a chromey green Camaro convertible. And you want to be a car guy, well, a tuner car guy, 
if you didn't mount your very first fart can on the wall when you were done with it. Yep. This is one of my car show trophies from the orange car. Got some cleaning supplies. Hoggerty bag. More cleaning supplies. My Fast and the Furious car. My remote control drift car. Just my stuff. Me when I was a little kid. Look how homely I was. Look at them teeth, guys. That was awful. Um, This was my... Spring Nationals top 50 award for my orange cards gone. My tuner first place award. This was my third place for Lake Placid, New York award. I have more around, but those are my three favorites, and that's for sentimental reasons. But snowmobile helmet, goggles. But this is my little domain. But I'm getting off topic. Now, when I was growing up, the things that got me into what I am being a car guy, and you know what? I don't really care if you guys like it or not. Um, my grandfather was a mechanic his whole life. I'm going to show it to him now. He was my best friend. The hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life was losing him, and it would probably, to date, be the hardest thing I'll ever have to go through. Because my plan in a perfect world is I will die before my son. But this gentleman right here, this is my grandfather. This picture was taken in his garage about six months before he passed away. Taught me a lot. And this is my grandmother who taught me a lot. I miss her every day. There wasn't a huge time span between the time I lost those guy, those two. It was rough. Um, now I couldn't keep the ashes to my grandfather. My grandmother wouldn't step. They're on different sides of the family. My grandfather was on my mother's side. My grandmother was on my father's side. My grandmother, who was still living, would not separate his ashes. But I have a small piece of my grandmother on my father's side, who's the lady I just showed you a picture of. But my grandfather got me into cars. Well, he got me into the trucks because he always had old school 80s, 70s lifted up Dodge trucks. And I thought that was great. I loved it. Um, now, the thing that got me hooked on going fast and um, fast cars was my father. That is his fault solely. If he was here right now as I was videotaping, he would say that I'm an idiot. <laughs> But um, when I was growing up, he had an 84 old Cutlass. It was originally a V6 car, nothing special. And when he bought it, it had hit a deer. But this was a rust-free car, guys. It was clean. Um, had a brown interior, which made uh, choosing a color when he painted it kind of hard. But it is what it is, you know? And... Um, him and I built that together when I was a kid. He put a 350 turbo tranny, an adapter plate, and a 455 rocket out of a 70s Oldsmobile in this car. We painted it like this tanny gold color. That's so hard to explain. I wish I had pictures of that car, but I don't. Um, and it looked awesome with that brown interior. He, I remember after we built the motor, he let me paint it. And I was only like 12. 10 years old maybe and um, <laughs> I painted the motor Chevy orange with gold valve covers a gold oil pan all the pulleys were like a for dark forest green metallic it was obnoxious but he left it and he let me do it but I remember the first time he took me for a ride in that car guys I was hooked the sound of that Rochester 750 quadrajet opening up opening up and Man, there was nothing like it. I love that sound. Um, I was hooked instantly. And then my uh, my dad always had cool stuff. You know, he had jacked up K5 Blazers and stuff like that. And two. And um, for my very first car, I was 15, 14 years old. I washed a bunch of dishes. And with a little help from my grandmother and my father, um... I bought 
an 87 Formula Firebird. I love that car. And I know where it is right now. That car, the one that was mine. I'm currently trying so hard to get that car back. But this car was immaculate. It belonged to a prison guard. It never seen a winner. It was a T-top, automatic. But when we got it, it had a four, uh, 305 in it. And uh, the guy had never serviced it. So the um, over the winter, the coolant froze in it. Cracked the block through the water jackets down by the lifter journals. So we found a four-bolt main 350 out of a Chevy truck. We had it punched 40 over. We put a crane cams energizer kit in it. Uh, 272 lift, 454 duration. We used the 305 high output heads with the 65cc chamber and the 194 valves. Had a dual plan aluminum intake, headers, awful Excel ignition because that's what I could afford. You know, I was washing dishes when I was building this car. It took me about two years to build this car before I could even drive it. But, um, oh my god, I'm starting to tear up. <laughs> um, that car meant a lot to me. The only reason I let it go is I had hit a hard spot in my life that I needed to come up from. And the car was sitting in storage and she was still as beautiful. She was jet black with a black interior. Um, I painted that motor Chevy orange. The whole thing. There's no chrome, nothing else. The only thing, a different color on that car was the air cleaner was black. I saved up and I bought the kit from an 84 Trans Am that made that offset hood scoop functional. Um... We topped off with a 750 Rochester. You can say whatever you want about Rochesters, but when that carb is tuned right, which my father could can tune a Rochester to a T. That man is amazing with an old Rochester carb. And um There's no this the sound of that four barrels kicking open was great. Um I miss that thing every day. And you know, the black on black Camaro, I think that was my thing to kind of, in a way it was like getting the car back, but not, cause I didn't know where it was when I bought this um, Camaro, but I am working on getting the, my first car back, which would be amazing. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the guy who's got it now wants way too much for it. Um, he drove it for a year after I sold it to him. It's been sitting in storage ever since, so it needs a lot of work. But she's still solid. And I want it back. In the worst way. But long story short, I got hooked on cars because I was always thrown into the mix. My grandfather was a mechanic. He owned his own shop. We built vehicles together. Every truck I ever built was with my grandfather. Every car I ever built was with my father. And strangely enough, my father's a diesel mechanic. And he's into, like, trucks is his thing. Um... But, I know, it's just, this was my, Camaro time brought up a lot of old feelings. My dad and I, every Sunday, we, um, we'd watch Dukes of Hazard and Chips. Yep, and sometimes Night Rider. That Night Rider is what got me hooked on the third gen Firebirds. That, I don't know. <laughs> um... That and Chips. If anybody remembers Chips, that show right there. We'd watch old movies. I remember um, the original Gone in 60 Seconds. You used to watch the newer Gone in 60 Seconds. The Eleanor Mustang. Oh my god, what a beautiful car. But. <sighs> Long story short, guys. Um, I'm hoping that my son will. I mean, I want him to be more than a mechanic. Everybody wants that for their kids. They want them to grow up, make all kinds of money, be successful. But I hope he's into cars. I hope my kid's a car guy. I hope I get that relationship with my son that I had with my dad and my grandfather where, um, oh my God, I get to build his first car or truck or whatever he chooses. I don't care. I don't care if his first car is a Prius. If him and I get to work on it together, that is going to be awesome. That is my goal. That is the one thing that I'm looking forward to do with my son. But, um, I don't even know if I'm going to post this because I look like such a <sighs> Sally. <laughs> but, um, my drip guards for the Tundra showed up today. 
I'm not going to do an unboxing because they're drip guards. Um, I decided to not paint them because I think too much white would be a little um, too much. I don't want to overdo it. I'm just going to put them on. Um, like I said, my cousin Eric has been working on it for me because I'm home with the boy, which is completely okay. I went down and checked the progress on it today, and it's looking good, but it's not done yet. Um, I thought it was going to be done today. They painted some stuff last night, and once they got the new paint and the shiny stuff, the clear coat on it, um, a couple more dings and dents showed up in the door that they had fixed, and it bothered them, so they're going to fix it. I told them not to worry about it because it's a truck. I use it as a work truck, but it is what it is. Um, when the fender flares come, as promised, I will... Well, the fender flares are here. I'm sorry. When it comes time for me to put the fender flares on, I will paint them. I will do step-by-step -step process, and we will put them on the truck together. That is my promise to you guys. Please have a good day, and thank you, Camaro Time. Uh, that video right there. Um, Guys, check Camaro Time out. He's awesome. Um, I subscribe to him. He's a great guy. Um, he just brought up a lot of stuff I wanted to share with you, but, um, in the process, it might look like a Sally, but I'm okay with that. But thank you guys. Have a good day.